Kia ora, ko holitoko ingoa, and um, I'm talking about the Future Slam, which is an event series that we hold at Auckland Museum. And it's a little bit like what we've been doing here today, um, and that we've been talking about all the amazing digital things um, that have been going on and the amazing digital opportunities. Uh, sitting in the audience today, it's been awesome to hear such like thoughtful and detailed and kind of critical applications of digital technologies and I guess future thinking. There's been a lot of like wisdom really and it's just like sitting there in awe. Um, but I'm going to ask you to forget all your considerate ways and answer a very black and white question. Are we, oh, are we heading for a dystopia or a utopia? So hands up for dystopia? No. <laughs> um, utopia. <laughs> okay, we've got a realist over here who's probably right, um, but we mostly think utopia, which is great. Um, but when you look outside, I guess it's kind of a dramatic question because a lot of the sort of pop culture, marketing, the news are kind of everyday chatter and buzz around the future, um, if you do have access to all of this, um, is kind of dramatic um, in terms of what, ha what is happening now and also in the future. Um, up on these slides, I especially like um, the promise, and this is just a sign in Newmarket in Auckland by the train station, um, dump all your stress in the world of virtual reality, go home a new person. <laughs> um, and <laughs> this futurism uh, thing, your children may never see a moon rise because they will live on the moon. Like, <laughs> it, it seems kind of far out, but equally there are rockets going to England in 10 years, so who knows. Um, and I mean, many people can kind of maybe distinguish between what's fake news and what's real and what might actually happen. Um, but this all does make it harder to understand what's actually happening. And I mean, we're the digital kind of professionals or the people who are really interested in this stuff because we're here at this conference. Um, but how can we sort of really spread this digital thinking um, to our colleagues, to other people in our institutions and get everyone on board? One way we've been doing this in Auckland Museum is through the Future Slam. Thanks to Niels for this cool sting. Do you see the star? Um, yeah, so once a month we do a one hour long um, session and we will have an external speaker, that's Sam Ramlu from Method, and an internal speaker, that's Sean, a uh, pictorial cur curator. We lure people in with food. That's the rocky road of the title. It's just a sweet treat. Um, we also do demos, sometimes just panel questions or sometimes workshops. And we have about 50 staff per event tend to attend. We have about 200 overall and the videos go on the internet afterwards. But taking it back, in 2016, um, we had a very similar series called the Digital Ideas Brewery and that was internal speakers basically saying like, here's what we're doing digitally at Auckland Museum today. Um, do you have any ideas as well? And um, people, um, we, those are kind of the topics we did, like 3D scanning, collection imaging. Um, and then at the start of this year, we did a little survey. Um, what did people think of these? People thought the purpose seemed a bit unclear um, and there was maybe too much idea generation. Like, you know, why haven't you put Koro, the AR Weta, on the floor yet? Um, so there's a kind of a, was hard to follow through with all the ideas that were being made. Um, people loved the Rocky Road, and they really loved the chance to explore these ideas and think about digital with colleagues and other teams whose job it might not be to do that usually. So back to the Future Slam, um, we kind of renamed it a wee bit, took the ideas brewing out of it, and set some clear objectives and a structure for the year ahead. Um, so we kind of looked, I guess, the kind of big four tech trends to start with, um, and we'd get an external speaker in and then have that internal speaker. So we did machine learning and AI, and we got someone from IBM in, um, and you see people kind of being like, oh, robots are gonna take our jobs, and all those kind of usual fears would um, brew up. And then we did ARV and mixed reality, again, um, someone from an agency, and then the Internet of Things, where we had an Internet of Things evangelist come in and show us all these videos of robots doing crazy things. Um, we didn't talk about blockchain, but uh, we'll save that for next year when everyone understands it more. Um, yeah. And this was some of the feedback. This was the Internet of Things. Very inspiring and so much I can share with young adult kids. Things are going to be different. Um, and people would say, oh, like we're talking about it in the weekend with my friends. And it's like, cool, awesome. 
Um, part two, we took, I guess, a kind of critical turn. We looked at redesigning the future, a cyborg visitor, and that came from tertiary institutions and the speakers, and then we did kind of more workshop-based things. Um, we haven't done that last one yet. Those are the workshops, and sorry, I'm running out of time. Um, the benefits of this, um, we have really found that having these events does kind of elevate and kickstart conversations, you know, as we're thinking, you know, what could we be doing in this gallery as the digital team and, and the uh, developers of the exhibition, and we'll be like, oh yeah, remember what they talked about yes, you know, yesterday, oh, we could do something like this here and here. So it does kind of raise up, spread that digital thinking, and it is quite a safe space to air concerns and hopes around um, new technologies. Um, and we do get people coming up and sort of talking about it, it afterwards. Um, learnings, if you were to do something similar, try to set expectations around the purpose of events, balance that idea generation just, um, with listening, discussion, etc. And if you can, bring in outside perspectives. Um, other things you could do, maybe you're at a much smaller institution, um, you could start with internal speakers, do a show and tell, maybe just report back on what you said, um, what you've seen at this conference. Um, you could maybe watch a TED talk or something similar during lunch and then do some sort of discussion afterwards, go to external events, meetups as a group, do like a future book club style thing. Um, there's a reason these are all centered around the group um, being, being in a group, because although like there's huge important value in our unique perspectives, like that's crucial. Um, but it's also really valuable to have a shared understanding. And you know, the, the future isn't siloed like it is in so many of our organizations. Um, so yeah, I, I was looking for images from our collection for this, and I saw these really cute, fun ho signs, and um, thought, oh, this is perfect, new working ahead. Um, it says, <laughs> I later realized it says men. I was like, oh. No, no. Um, so it, it should be new. It's new, okay? Um, so two points. First, you see what you want to see. And secondly, um, the future is for everyone. And I think as digital professionals, we have a real responsibility to bring people along with us on this really fascinating journey. It's kind of scary. It's kind of exciting. It's a lot of things. Um, but yeah, it's a lot better when we're kind of in it together. So kia ora.